Welcome to the Cell Signaling Technology in-house training tutorial for the study of AKT. This tutorial will be broken down into three sections. Section 1 of the presentation will cover AKT background information as well as upstream signaling. Section 2 will cover information on downstream signaling and Section 3 will cover the clinical ramifications of aberrant AKT signaling. AKT is a serine threonine protein kinase that is a member of the AGC kinase family. AKT, which is also called PKB, was originally discovered as an oncogene within the mouse leukemia virus AKT8, also known as VAKT. AKT, like other members of this kinase family, has an N-terminal plextrin homology domain, also called pH domain, a conserved kinase domain, and a hydrophobic C-terminal regulatory domain, and turn motif. There are three isoforms of AKT. AKT1, which is expressed in most cell types, AKT2, which is also expressed in most cell types, and AKT3, which is expressed primarily in neuronal cells. AKT functions to promote cell growth, proliferation, and survival through phosphorylation of a number of downstream targets. These downstream targets contain the AKT recognition or consensus sequence RXR, XXS, or T. In this sequence, phosphorylation occurs on the serine or threonine residue, and arginine residues are required at the minus 5 and minus 3 positions. This western blot shows immunoprecipitation of extracts from serum-starved NIH 3T3 cells, untreated or treated with a combination of fetal bovine serum, FBS, and colliculin A, using the phosphoserine threonine AKT substrate rabbit monoclonal antibody, product number 9614, followed by western blot analysis using the same antibody. FBS contains large amounts of growth factors that stimulate AKT and other signaling pathways. Colliculin A is a serine threonine phosphatase inhibitor and is used to maintain the phosphorylated state caused by FBS treatment. With combined FBS colliculin A treatment, a number of phosphorylated bands appear on the western blot, indicating phosphorylation of proteins containing the AKT recognition sequence. Upstream signaling of AKT. The following is an overview of how AKT signals in the cell. A number of receptors at the cell membrane signal through AKT, including many receptor tyrosine kinases, RTKs, cytokine receptors, G protein coupled receptors, GPCRs, B cell receptors, and integrin receptors. These receptors all signal to AKT via a protein kinase called PI3 kinase and affect the phosphorylation state of numerous downstream targets. Now let's look in more detail at how a signal from a cell membrane receptor leads to the activation of AKT, a process called upstream signaling. Membrane receptors signal through phosphoinositide 3 kinase, which is known as PI3K, to activate AKT. PI3K phosphorylates phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, known as PIP2, to generate phosphatidylinositol 3,4,5-triphosphate, also called PIP3. PIP3 binds to the pH domains of several proteins, including AKT and PDK1. This PIP3, which is membrane-anchored, binds to the pH domain of AKT and causes the recruitment of AKT to the cell membrane. The image here shows confocal immunofluorescent analysis, or IFIC, of C2C12 cells that have been treated with either the PI3K inhibitor, LY294002, or with insulin, using the AKT pan rabbit monoclonal antibody, product number 4691. AKT pan antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with Alexafluor 555 phylloidin. With LY294002 treatment, PI3K inhibition does not produce PIP3, and AKT is not recruited to the membrane. Note the green cytoplasmic staining with LY294002 treatment. 
insulin treatment causes PI3K to generate PIP3, which recruits AKT to the membrane. Note the green cluster staining on the membrane with insulin. The AKT pan antibody detects all three isoforms of AKT. At the membrane, PDK1 phosphorylates AKT at threonine 308. Threonine 308 is on the AKT activation loop and is within the AKT kinase domain. This IFIC analysis shows C2C12 cells that have been treated with either insulin or the PI3K inhibitor LY294002 using phosphoakt threonine 308 rabbit monoclonal antibody product number 2965 labeled in green. Insulin treatment causes signaling through PI3K, resulting in PDK1 phosphorylation of AKT threonine 308 at the membrane. Note clusters of green-yellow stain at the membrane in the left panel. With LY294002 treatment, PI3K is inhibited and phosphorylation of AKT threonine 308 does not occur. Note loss of green signal in the right panel. P10 is a phosphatase that converts PIP3 back to PIP2. Therefore, P10 inactivates AKT and serves as an off switch for the signaling pathway. Loss of P10 results in constitutive activation of AKT and is often seen in human cancers, an example of which will be shown later in this tutorial. Full activation of AKT requires a second phosphorylation at serine 473 by mTORC2. mTORC2 is the rapamycin insensitive complex that consists of mTOR, Richter, G beta L, also called MLST8, and SYN1. Serine 473 is within the C terminal regulatory domain of AKT. Seen in this image is IFIC analysis of C2C12 cells, either LY294002 treated or insulin treated, using phospho-AKT serine 473 rabbit monoclonal antibody, product number 4060 in green. Inhibition of PI3K by LY294002 does not cause AKT to be recruited to the membrane and phosphorylated by mTORC2. Note lack of green signal with LY294002 treatment. Insulin treatment results in AKT recruitment to the membrane and phosphorylation by mTORC2 at serine 473. Note cluster of green stain at the membrane in the insulin treated panel. Other phosphorylation sites of AKT. In addition to threonine 308 and serine 473, AKT is also phosphorylated at other sites along the protein. One of these additional phosphorylation sites is threonine 450. Threonine 450 phosphorylation occurs in AKT's turn motif. The turn motif is a motif also found in PKC and other AGC family members. Threonine 450 has been shown to be phosphorylated by at least two kinases. The first is the mTORC2 complex, whose phosphorylation at threonine 450 promotes proper protein folding and stability in newly synthesized AKT. Threonine 450 can also be phosphorylated by junk. Phosphorylation by this kinase results in reactivation of AKT in cardiomyocytes after ischemic injury and serves as a priming event for subsequent phosphorylation by PDK1. Here is Western blot analysis of extracts from NIH3T3 cells, either lambda phosphatase or PDGF treated, using phospho-AKT threonine 450 antibody, product number 9267 in the upper panel, or AKT antibody, product number 9272 in the lower panel. Note the appearance of threonine 450 phosphorylation with PDGF treatment. Upstream signaling review. Let's review AKT upstream signaling. Activation of membrane receptors by growth factors, cytokines, or other external stimuli results in signaling through PI3K to generate PIP3. This recruits AKT to the cell membrane, 
where it is phosphorylated at threonine 308 by PDK1. Then, AKT undergoes a second phosphorylation at serine 473 by mTORC2. Full activation of AKT requires phosphorylation at both sites. The activation state of AKT in cells can be measured using phosphothreonine 308 and phosphoserine 473 specific AKT antibodies. Active AKT phosphorylates many downstream targets to promote cell proliferation, cell migration, insulin action, survival, protein synthesis, neuroprotection, and nitric oxide synthesis.